Hey guys, it's Red Nomster, and today I am here in a small purple room. As you can see, there are eight holes in the ceiling, eight holes in the ground. Well, nine technically, because there's one for you. And there are some moles, yes, because this is whack-a-mole. <laughs> but they're, of course, gravel, because this is Minecraft. But if we hit this button, they will start uh, exiting and entering through the holes at random. Um, multiple can do it at once, you know, they're all independent of each other. Uh, so if we go in the center, we can go ahead and try to kill some of these. And of course, you know, some of them will be able to kill, uh, some of them we can try to kill. Uh, and they might suck down, hopefully. We'll see what happens. Yep. Okay, he's gone. I got him! That was Flint. I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't know if I... No, he's gone. It can be very difficult at times, uh, especially... Okay. <laughs> especially when you get lower numbers, you have to turn a lot to find them, and by the time you find them, they're already gone. Come here! Dang it! <laughs> But something interesting to note is that each mole can have more than one life. As you can see, that mole is just replaced by another mole. Now, they can have multiple lives, of course, but the way this is set up, each mole can have, um, I think, 200 plus lives. <laughs> Especially if you build it at the right elevation, which is kind of weird if you think about it. Uh, but that's a lot of moles, right? It's pretty cool. We can stop it by doing this. Sometimes the stopping mechanism doesn't work right. Sometimes one, yeah, is already in motion, and then you'd have to stop it again. But if you stop it, the other two push. So I have to make a surefire way to make that, I haven't done yet. Uh, I'm not sure yet. I'll probably just leave it just because it's basically just a mess around survival game, right? <laughs> you know, it's not a not competitive, so it doesn't really matter if something messes up. But if we go into game mode one, it's kind of big, right? It's It's got a lot of logic in it. This line of slime blocks basically just reduces the sound that all of these pistons are making. Or I guess just this one because it didn't get pulled back. Uh, I'll go ahead and do that right now. Oh, I accidentally just activated all of them. Dang it! All right, one second. So, uh, how does this work? Basically, instead of using hopper drop for randomizers like most people would, I use shulkers. <laughs> and why am I using shulkers? I don't know. Uh, because they're tileable, I suppose. Uh, each shulker pushes up. Now, of course, it's just string here, but this is a bud switch. So once this uh, and all of the other ones are pushed next to the string, each time this little shulker raises its head, which is something I think I've discovered, I don't know if anybody else has done this, uh, it actually activates tripwire because these are not just blocks, they're entities. And when entities go through tripwire, uh, it updates it. So, it updates the string, which updates the piston, which then pushes up. And when it does so, it pushes up this giant line of slime blocks, which then pushes this little gravel block, aka the mole, one block up. So I'll show you that w with uh, this little guy over here, I suppose. I'll just, like, only activate one of them. But as you can see, uh, every time he raises his head and puts it back down, uh, it activates it. Like so. And when it does so, it activates this sticky piston that then sends a one tick pulse to all of these. Now this is necessary because you need him to be stuck up there and need him to go down, and of course this is on a pulse, so basically a bud switch coming off of a uh, uh, shulker with string creates a monostable circuit. I thought that was pretty cool, because <laughs> you'd think it'd just be random, but nope, it's a, it's a monostable circuit every single time. So uh, he goes up and he goes back down multiple times, and once you kill him, uh, I'll go over here and show you. I'll have to get rid of some of the hoppers maybe. No, it's good. Uh, yeah, I'll get some. Alright, so this is the one that's going up and down, as you can see from way down there. Every time it comes down, and every time it comes up, this little comparator flashes. And it does so because there is a furnace that is basically full, of course. It's extremely full, actually, uh, on the other side of this block. Now, as long as there's a block here in this space, uh, this comparator, or this repeater will be on. But uh, this little four take repeater basically uh, stops the comparator from pulsing the system when it goes up and down because, of course, the comparator checks fast enough if there's a block there while these blocks are moving. Because when a block is in motion, it can't be tested through uh, like it is right now. But uh, hopefully it'll move soon. No? Did you break? You broke. Dang it! Here. <laughs> there's a way of resetting that too. Uh, but basically, uh, the comparator is fast enough to test the gravel, but the repeater is not. So the repeater just basically says, uh, I think there's a block there, but once it definitely notices that there's no block there... Uh, come on, little shulker guy. There you go. Once it definitely tests that there's no block there, uh, the repeater will then turn off, and then replace it with more gravel if there was some, but there's not any up there. So basically, uh, the way it does that is it goes up through this little system. Basically, this is a four-tick repeater attaching to a piston, and this piston just attaches to the side of this. And if you recognize this from down there, this is a bud switch. So when this piston goes off, this piston uh, basically moves, right? And if it goes back down, it moves again, so it doesn't matter if it's constant or not. And, uh, yeah. So that's why it keeps making the sound over and over again, because once the slime blocks go in front of it, it makes noise again, but there's no way to really avoid that. Um... Yeah, there's no way to avoid that. Um, if I put, like, glass there, then this constant output would test that there is nothing there when there is a gravel block there. So, yeah, there's no way to really avoid that. But, 
Uh, when it goes up, it goes to this obsidian block and then these slabs and then hits this piston. And of course, there's just gravel here, like so. So when there is gravel there, or up here, it'll push it at some point. There, oh, oh, there we go. It'll push it at some point. And when it does so, it detects that there is life here again, no matter what. So it then stops pushing gravel constantly uh, because it's like, hey, I don't need any more lives right now because I already have one. That's basically a pretty cool way to think of it. But um, the, each one has it, if you can see in here, like this little guy. Uh, he is on the other side of this, and the comparator goes up here and tests here. But I don't know, I thought it was a pretty cool concept. Uh, just using shulkers in general as a randomizer was pretty interesting in my opinion. But, uh, you know, the vertical redstone of it, the one wide, uh, you know, things I thought were pretty cool, using bud switches and stuff like that. So it was a cool range of concepts in my opinion, but, uh, you know, the respawns were pretty neat. And just the fact that you can build this in survival pretty easily. Uh, you don't need all of these slime blocks here. Like I said, they're all just to reduce the sound of these pistons that are going off constantly. But you can build it technically like two blocks above it, like right here. But I built it like 15 <laughs> or something like that, you know, 12 obviously because that's the push rate of pistons, push distance. Uh, but yeah, I thought it was a cool concept. So if you guys enjoyed it, leave a like of course and subscribe if you're new here if you want to see cool concepts like this. And I'll see you in the next video.